Chapter 30 Two Days Sky imagined herself soaking in Dylan's strength. I'll need it. Dylan, Tom, and Dad, they may suppose I'm not aware of what I was doing, that I don't understand what may be out there, but I do. Yet, if I don't go now, I may never get to go. It may only get worse. Sky stepped away from Dylan and looked out over the view. There were fog-covered mountains as far as she could see from this lofty place. It was beautiful. It was safe, or as safe as the world was right now. Sky checked herself. There was still some sort of order. People clung to the familiar in a crisis. Healthy people continued to work, doing their best to help their community through this event. And police assisted those who needed it. Perhaps the trip wouldn't be bad at all. Maybe in two days, things would be better. Five hours. It takes five hours to get home. I'll fill up on gas, water, and food, and I won't stop until I pull into Mom and Dad's driveway. Just the thought of seeing them made Skye's emotions lighter. Dylan scraped his foot against a rock sticking out of the ground. Skye ran her gaze over him. Tall, strong, and handsome. His black hair ruffled in the wind while his dark blue eyes narrowed as he scanned the view. I'm sure he takes in a lot more than I do when he looks out there. There was a part of her, a large part, that wanted to curl up in this cabin and let Dylan take care of her. He would do it. She could read him enough to recognize that. But that wasn't the sort of woman she was, and that wouldn't get her to her parents. Right now, Skye had to trust that her father told her the truth. Asthma and allergies. It was beyond her to acknowledge she would never make the trip, never see her family again. She even went so far as to dream they would all survive this epidemic. Sky wondered if her house remained untouched, if this disease would stop now or keep going, if she was making the right decision. It was impossible to know the answers to all that. Even now, the world would be changed forever. If it continued, Sky shivered. You cold? Dylan asked with a frown. The temperature may be a little chilly this morning, but it was still summer. No. No, I'm fine. I was just thinking. She wrapped her arms around herself, despite what she said. Dylan stepped closer, blocking the wind. Hope you're thinking of sticking around. Sky squared her shoulders. I'm staying here for two days. Like Tom said, then I'm heading home. Dylan scoffed and shook his head. It's foolish. Dylan wouldn't be the only one with that opinion. It is what it is, she replied. I need to be with my family. You heard your dad, he interrupted. They want you here. Yes. But, we'll see what two days bring. Her eyes teared up. Skye tipped her face up to Dylan's and added. They're my parents. Can't you understand that I have to try? He shrugged, I wouldn't have risked my life for neither of the ones I lived with. You're a fool if you go, and I won't have anything to do with it. His words came out gruffer than he intended, and he wished he could pull them back. But he couldn't, and he'd meant them. Sky turned away from him. I understand. My problems are not yours. And you know nothing about me so don't call me a fool. Dylan put a hand to her shoulder and leaned toward her. I know you more than you think. Probably shouldn't tell you that, but I do. This decision, it's the wrong one. One that could kill you and that boy. I'm trying to save your lives. Sky frowned. It's not a bad decision just because you wouldn't make it. A stormy light flared in Dylan's eyes. He turned and walked away. I ain't arguing with you. Don't be angry, she pleaded. He stopped. I ain't angry. I just want, he ran a hand through his hair. Since when does what I want matter? Sky walked up to stand by him. Dylan. I ain't angry. He repeated as he stepped away and walked to the door of the cabin. Sky watched him go. Something in the way he walked, perhaps the set of his shoulders, reminded her of an earlier conversation with Jesse. 
There were times Dylan seemed uncomfortable with Skye's presence and took it out on her by grumbling about trivial matters. After one such time, he crossed the room and occupied himself with cleaning his weapons. It was then that Jesse leaned toward Skye and said, he likes you. Skye shushed him. No, he doesn't. That's not how someone acts when they like another person. Jesse shrugged. It's how Dylan acts. When Skye shook her head, he insisted. He does. Jesse, he doesn't even know me. He crunched on a piece of toast. Wade says they do know you. Skye had dismissed Jesse's words, but now as she recalled them, they brought back something else. I know those shoulders, this man. He saved me before yesterday. He stood up to the Bengay guy. And outside the coffee shop? That was him. Now that I think about it, I've seen him around town a few times. If Dylan had asked around about her as she'd been told twice now, it certainly added an awkward twist to this arrangement. Skye's gaze trailed him as he reached the porch and held the door for her. She still stood in the yard, but he waited there as if she needed to make a decision. One thing Skye had to admit, this man who had appeared frightening only days ago, now seemed a protection. He had already been looking out for her. He was tough, she was not. Skye looked over the hills again imagining the chaos below. This was the best place for her and Jesse right now. She couldn't ask for better. Skye walked toward Dylan. When she got to the door, she flashed a determined look at him as she squeezed past him. Two days. She said. Dylan laughed despite himself. Stubborn, foolish woman. After gasping, Skye added her light laugh to his deep chuckle. Why do I get the feeling he likes the challenge? The next two days are going to be interesting. The End Sanctuary's Aggression, The Road, Book 2 in the Sanctuary's Aggression series is coming soon to youtube.com. To purchase ebooks or paperbacks, visit amazon.com and search for Myra Dawn Books. Or go to www.myradon.com.